Happy New Year, St. Paul's. Thank you for trudging out in the wintry, cold morning this morning to be with us. Uh, it's a joy to be able to gather on this first Sunday of 2022, which we hope and pray is going to be a beautiful, wonderful year. Let us begin our worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who didst wonderfully create and yet more wonderfully restore the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity. Thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing, ag sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together a great company. They shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in the straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women, women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord.
behold, I bring you good tidings of a great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Please be seated. Any adult who has ever lost a child in a crowd for even a few moments is well prepared to understand the terror that was experienced by Mary and Joseph in this morning's gospel passage. I've experienced it personally on a very much smaller scale. And I can't help but wonder how much more terrifying it might have been to have lost the Messiah the savior of the world. Unlike our transportation of today in fast-moving vehicles of various sorts, in the first century they would have walked all together, a large group of family and friends coming and going to the feast of the Passover together. The scene unfolds with Mary and Joseph along with countless others leaving Jerusalem for home. Typically, the men and the women would have walked separately, talking about the various things that men and women tend to talk about. And after a full day of walking, Mary and Joseph discover that Jesus wasn't with the other kids of his age, nor with any of the other families, nor with the other parent. In fact, he was missing. Can you even imagine their terror? Now Mary and Joseph rise early the next morning after a likely very sleepless night and they return to Jerusalem, another full day's walk. They proceed to spend some portion of a third day yet searching for Jesus before they encounter him. And then there he is, sitting in the midst of the teachers of the faith in the temple listening to the rabbis, asking questions of the scholars, impressing the people around him with his depth of understanding of the Hebrew scriptures and of God. And then up walk his earthly parents. It doesn't take much for us to imagine both the sense of relief and frustration Mary and Joseph might have felt in that moment. What is recorded is this statement uttered by Mary. Child, why have you treated us this way? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. Many details are actually presented to us in that short exchange. First, Mary calls him child, which is technically true, but also diminishing by the day. Thanks to Luke's details, we know this event unfolds when Jesus is 12 years of age. We also know that Hebrew tradition marks the age of majority at 13 years old. Can you even imagine that in this day? This means that Jesus, according to Hebrew tradition, was almost a man, even though Mary and most other mothers would consider him a child her child. Secondly, according to our translation, Mary indicates to Jesus that your father and I have been searching for you. Now, after 12 years of raising the young Jesus, it must have been common for Mary to refer to Joseph, who was Jesus's father by adoption, as his father. The phrase, your father and I, was likely quite natural for her. Thirdly, Mary's words end with the phrase, in great anxiety, as in your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. I personally would have been losing my mind in that moment, torn between running to my child to hug him tightly and chastising him openly for causing the terror experienced over the last three days. You all can nod that you agree with me on that one. Come on, I'm waiting. Nod your heads. You all still awake out there? Great anxiety, I think, in this case is a vast understatement. But Jesus' response to Mary and Joseph is equally intriguing. He says this, 
Why were you searching for me? Did you not know I must be in my father's house? For Jesus, sitting in the temple amongst the religious rulers of the time, was the most natural thing in the world. Why wouldn't he be there? Why doesn't it make sense that he was so exquisitely at home in his father's house that he would forget or neglect to leave with the rest of his human family? Why would they be worried? Clearly there is a disconnect for the scripture tells us, but they did not understand what he said to them. What exactly did Jesus say to him? If we pay close attention, what he says is rather important. First, he gently corrects Mary's reference to Joseph as your father by referring to God himself as my father when he says, I must be in my father's house. Maybe they miss that subtle distinction because of their anxiety, or maybe they miss it because they also refer to God as a father figure. Either way, it appears the importance of Jesus' words in this moment aren't clearly understood to Joseph and Mary. And if we're paying even closer attention, we might interpret in his statement that Jesus, at 12 years old, understands quite fully that he is different from, he is more than the other 12-year-olds with whom he lives and travels. In his father's house, the holy temple for all of, Jew all of the Jewish people, he is truly at home. He is full of both understanding and curiosity. This is important for us to note, for us to treasure as well. On this Sunday, there are actually three separate gospel passages that could have been used. First, we could have used the Epiphany passage, which tells of the visit of the wise men. If you've been paying attention, our wise men have been getting closer and closer to baby Jesus over the last few services. Secondly, we could have chosen the passage about the faithfulness of Joseph, which tells when an angel of the Lord appears to Joseph and instructs him to flee to Nazareth in order to ensure Jesus' safety. And thirdly, we could choose the one that I chose for this morning. The selection for today made sense to me as we begin this new year of 2022, looking for indications of hope, for signs that God is still with us, still amidst us all. In this passage, we might find a deep abiding sense that God's love and care for us is manifest in the small moments of daily life if we only take the time to notice and treasure them. Mary did. She noticed and treasured them. The scene closes with this. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all of these things in her heart. Mary treasured all of these things in her heart. Certainly, she treasured finding the lost Jesus. Certainly, she treasured that his response to their great anxiety was to leave the temple and go with them. Certainly, as a mother, she treasured that he was obedient to them. And like any mother knowing her child is about to be launched into the world, she most certainly treasured the last days, weeks, and months of having Jesus safely tucked away in her and Joseph's care. For us on this cold, wintry morning, I think our Ephesians reading might be our best takeaway for this passage. Paul, in his letter to the church of Ephesus, says this, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. 
I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. My friends, may the story of our gospel passage this morning, combined with St. Paul's words, bring you great hope today and for this entire year. May we never forget the glorious riches of inheritance, nor the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. And may we enter this new year with that spirit of revelation as we come to know our Savior more and more dearly. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Doug, our bishop, and Michelle, our priest, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Eric, our governor, and Tom, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in thy mercy. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, 
they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in thy mercy. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Marilyn, Virginia, Bob, Linda, Sally, Jim, John, Bob, Tom, Megan, Winnie, Elsie, Gloria, Gary, Steve, Charlie, Rebecca, Lauren, Helen, Barb, Doris, Marianne, and all immigrants and refugees and all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy. We commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with thy heavenly grace and grant them a sense of thy abiding presence wherever they may be. Lord, in thy mercy. Holy Creator, in the midst of this pandemic, we implore thee to guard and protect all of our medical professionals and frontline workers, to safeguard each of us from the virus and to grant us patience and mental health as we continue to make good decisions to contain this disease. We pray for the disbursement and the efficacy of the vaccinations. Lord, we beseech thee to bring to full recovery all those suffering from COVID and its aftermath. And we remember all those that have succumbed to the pandemic who now rest in thy loving embrace. Lord, in thy mercy. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. Paul, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we would offer prayers for birthdays and anniversaries. I have one birthday listed between today and next Sunday, and that's for Rebecca Coffin. Are there any other birthdays that I'm missing? Okay, let us pray for Rebecca. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servant Rebecca as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Are there any anniversaries this week? No, okay. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share the peace. Okay.
Okay, please be seated for a couple of announcements. Um, one, and I haven't put this anywhere, if you have Christmas cards at home, used Christmas cards that you have received in the mail, do me a favor, rip off the front cover, bring me the front covers, and I'm going to be collecting them to send to our Christmas at Sea program again for next December. I thought now might be the time because as you're cleaning up after Christmas, don't throw those cards away. Bring in the front cover for um, the knitters that actually write little Merry Christmas notes as they send out the knitted um, items to the Mariners. Uh, second, you'll notice we don't have our new giving envelopes for this year yet. The printer is behind schedule. So for this week and possibly another week, uh, we have some that are at the greeters at the usher stands. If you would just grab one of those, write your name on it and put your offering in that, we would appreciate that. We'll get them to you the moment we have them. Third, next Sunday is our Epiphany Tea. Unlike in the past when we've had it open to the public and we've made it a grand affair, because of the pandemic, we're gonna keep it a little cozy this year, so it's just gonna be for us. Uh, our St. Paul's family, whether you're a member or a visitor, whoever comes to church next Sunday is welcome to join us for a simplified Epiphany Tea, which we will have as part of our coffee hour after church. We will also have a limited number of Epiphany Cake to-goes, so if you're not comfortable coming down for fellowship given the COVID, the COVID numbers, we totally understand, and we still want you to celebrate this uh, Epiphany tradition of ours. And last, please, please, please don't forget, our annual meeting is scheduled for two weeks from today on the 16th. We're gonna have it right here in the church proper immediately after service. We're gonna keep it as short as we possibly can. But we need you here and we need to have a quorum so that we can conduct the business of the church. Am I missing any other announcements? Jean, Sue, do you have any announcements? No. Nothing about the poinsettias or anything? Okay, next week we'll take the poinsettias home with us and see how long we can each keep them alive. Jean, did you have anything? No. Okay. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us, a perfect and offering and sacrifice to God.
Jesus Christ, thine only Son, to be born for us. Who by the mighty power of the Holy Ghost was made very man of the substance of the Virgin Mary, his mother, that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become the children. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising <coughs> to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby as one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most light humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we, and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy to, through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, 
Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord.
in union, O Lord, with thy faithful people at every altar of thy church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated. We desire to offer to thee praise and thanksgiving. We remember thy death, Lord Christ. We proclaim thy resurrection. We await thy coming in glory. And since some of us cannot receive thee today in the sacrament 